Yo, what's up, everybody? Welcome back. I was not expecting to make this video. If you would have asked me a couple of weeks ago about this, I would have said I'm not interested. What we're going to be talking about today is the Immersion RC Rapid Fire Goggle Module, which I recently got. So I've been using the Furious Trudy for the past, I don't know, over a year. And it's a, it's a really reliable module, very easy to, to deal with. You just plug it in, it works, you update the firmware every once in a while. Very reliable. And I was, I was happy with it. And I am not super sensitive to interference when I fly. I mostly fly freestyle and usually not in super open areas. And I can live with breakup, like it doesn't really bother me. So when this module came out, there was a lot of hype about it. And for the first few months, like whenever I looked at it, there always seemed to be some kind of issue. There were camera compatibilities, you know, acknowledged by immersion that dealt with specific cameras, including cameras I use. So I use two different FPV cameras in my freestyle quads. I use Runcam Micro Eagle and and pretty much everything else, including the, the, the smaller quads, the three and two inch quads and five inch quads that, you know, are not gonna be carrying a GoPro, stuff like that. All those quads have the Foxier Arrow Micro Pro. And that was officially acknowledged by Immersion to have like compatibility issues with rapid fire due to the fact that the Something about the the way the signal was supplied from the camera was out of spec for whatever video spec. So there were issues with that. Then you'd go online and you'd see people complaining that, you know, the module loses uh, lock constantly. It blacks out. It acts weird. You see DVR recordings where things are looking black and white and the screen is flashing black. Just there was a lot of stuff out there that was kind of like, well, I'm not going to switch to a module that's, you know, possibly going to be a headache especially considering I have some of these cameras or I'm using some of these cameras that are known to not really be fully compatible with the module. So I guess it was about two weeks ago, my buddy Cypher FPV was like, hey, I ordered the the rapid fire and we both use Dominator HD3 goggles. So when he ordered it, I was like, oh, you know, you're nuts. You're going to have problems. You, know, you got to hook up a ribbon cable or mod the power in the goggles and the camera. He also uses some Fox Fury Hour Micro Pros. You know, you're going to have issues with camera compatibility. I was really nervous about, you know, what was going to happen with this module. He got it. And you know, this is like end of October right now. So rapid fire has been out for a few months and it works like perfectly. The cameras that, you know, supposedly are incompatible, I guess at some point they fixed that. We're using those cameras in rapid fire mode one, no problem. It, it really worked really, really well. I was actually surprised that there was a tangible or perceivable improvement over the, the, the Furious module. I was, I was shocked and it was enough of an improvement in the overall just, you know, picture quality in the goggles that, you know, I decided to go ahead and get it and... I was still kind of skeptical when I got it. I was like, I don't know, you know, am I going to have problems and, you know, low power issue or bad DVR or whatever. And no, nothing. So everything is working pretty much flawlessly for me so far. And I guess, you know, they, they've updated the firmware quite a few times since it came out. I know there's been a couple of different batches. This is definitely from definitely at least not from the first batch. There's a little piece of foam you can check for when you get the goggle to let you know. And it works just hands down better than my Furious. And I'm actually surprised about that. And I'm still kind of shocked. Let's plug it in and we'll kind of take a look at how this works. If you haven't seen this before, it's very straightforward. On the main screen, you have your FPV frequency that you're tuned to quite large. And below that, there's a row of letters and numbers which denote uh, what band and channel you're on. So to change bands, you simply move the joystick left or right. You've got, um, they're kind of a little bit strange, but I guess not really how they've got the bands laid out. Instead of ABC or AB, whatever it is, it's I, which is actually F band, uh, R, which is race band, and then you got E, B, A. And low band and X band is basically just a configurable band. You could set whatever eight channels or eight frequencies you want in there. And it can be kind of like a favorites. And then when you press the joystick, you enter the menu. Here's the band selection. If you'd rather do it this way, channel selection. You do have a spectrum analyzer and a band scanner. I know that one or, one or both of these were missing initially. And people were complaining that there was no band scanner. But there is. And I don't have a... Um, anything connected right now. So there's kind of nothing to see here. Your modes here. So rapid fire one is kind of the preferred mode. That's where all the rapid fire magic happens. 
Rapid Fire 2 is supposed to be a compatibility mode. Like if you've got you know a piece of video hardware that doesn't like Rapid Fire Mode 1, you can try it on Rapid Fire Mode 2. And Legacy is supposed to work just like a traditional diversity receiver. So if you just you know wanted to use it without any of the processing that Rapid Fire does to the video signal, maybe if you were going long range or something like that, you can do that. I've I've been pretty much exclusively using it on Rapid Fire 1. It's been working great. So there's that, and we have antenna. You can choose if you want um, both receivers operating, the bottom one only, the upper one only, or you can turn them both off. The reason this is here is because if you don't have HDOs or Attitude V4s and you need to use the ribbon cable or whatever for power, to be able to access your DVR in the goggle, you will need to, <clears throat> you'll need to activate this. So that's why it's there. OSD. There's a few different OSD options. I've been using RSSI, RSSI Lite. I'll show you what that looks like in the, the DVR. It's basically a small little box at the, the top left of the screen that just shows you your um, little RSSI bar for, for um, each receiver. You have also have RSSI, which is two long bars that cover up, that pretty much run the whole top of the, the length of the screen. And then you have lock where it'll just show you if the receiver has achieved a lock or not. I really like the RSSI Lite one. I think that's a newer one. That works pretty good. OSD position, you can kind of fine tune, tweak a little bit where the OSD is positioned based on what style goggles you have. Uh, for the HD3s, for me, top puts the RSSI light like right at the very top of the screen, so that's the one I'm using. And then status, so you can see I've got firmware 1.17 on here. Rapid fire 1.06, I don't know if that's the hardware version or not, I think it might be. Uh, power 4.8 volts and low power no. So the first kind of catch with this thing, I guess, is, and you know, most of the reviews I see out there for this thing have been uh, paired with an HDO. And I guess, you know, people do that because it's with any other goggle other than I think it's the HDOs, the Attitude V4s, and maybe the new Terminator Edition HD2s, there's not really enough power in here. So you have to do one of two things. It comes with a supplied ribbon cable and a nice sticker so you can kind of lay the ribbon cable on the outside of the goggle and put the sticker over it. And then there's a module here in the head tracking bay you install. And basically this little board here, the ribbon cable plugs into this and then it plugs into the module inside and this gives the module some extra power so it can operate correctly. So that's, you know, one of the catches. And again, one of the reasons why I was kind of not really super psyched about upgrading this, because it's like, oh, you know, the Furious, you just plug it in. This, you got to worry about that. Now, the other option with this is um, there's a power mod you can do that's, strangely enough, I thought it was well documented, but apparently it's not because there's an L1, what they call the L1 mod, which is where you're um, bypassing a, I guess it's a resistor uh, in the L1 spot in the goggles. So when my buddy Cypher started using these, he did the L1 mod and he still got low power on the goggles. So then we started finding out about this L10 mod or L1 and L10 mod, which is not really as well documented. If you go on YouTube and search for it, there's very little information about it, but basically there's a second spot in which you do the same thing. You bypass a component inside the, the goggles using a little piece of wire. So he went ahead and did that. He still got low power, so he ended up installing the ribbon cable after all. So I don't know what the deal is with that, but my advice would be based on what he's been through and the fact that I've had no power issues with the ribbon cable, just go ahead and do the ribbon cable. If you don't want to run it on the outside of the goggles, you will have to open the goggles up. I'm not going to do that now. There's plenty of videos about how to open a pair of Fat Shark goggles, but basically other than opening them, opening them up, Here's my ribbon cable here. You just need to make a hole in the shell of the goggle right there so that the ribbon cable can pass through from the module bay over to the head tracker bay. And then that gets plugged into the module itself. So it's not, this is, you know, not, if you don't want the ribbon cable on the outside, this is an easy way to get the cable inside the goggles. Again, you know, the idea that you have to kind of hack into these things to get them working is not really... Fun. It would be nicer if they just kind of worked when you plug them in, but I guess the, you know, engineering or the power design that the, the power module that runs these things is not been updated in a while or not, they didn't start updating it until recently with the newer goggles. So if, you know, if you've got anything other than, you know, the latest, I guess, three versions of Fat Shark goggles that 
I think the the first of those three that have come out were the Attitude V4s that came out a little over a year ago. So if you got anything, you know, uh, released before then, like HD threes, HD twos, Dominator V threes, you know, you'll have to you'll have to deal with this ribbon cable thing, and that's not the end of the world. But um, you know, like I said, if you don't want to deal with having a ribbon cable on the outside of the goggles, which you know, I I that would bother me for a couple of reasons. Or you don't feel like opening up the goggles and making a small hole to pass them through, then you know, this is gonna this is gonna annoy you. But that being said, getting on to the performance of these things, and we'll we'll take a look at some of the DVR here in a second. There's something about the not just the reception, but the the video signal that this thing outputs that just seems to be imp improved over the the Furious. Now that being said. The reception also is better, specifically at like closer ranges. I haven't really tested this going anything you know super far away yet, but in areas where you're close enough to have a really really strong signal, the video is basically perfect. You don't see any kind of multipathing or anything like that. Like it's it's very very crystal pristine in those situations as you start to go a little bit further away obviously you'll start to see some breakup like you will on any module at that point it, my impression of what um how, how the video looks is it's almost like you can see the breakup want to start and the um, the rapid fire like suppressing it the little even the little kind of normal breakup that you get just flying around you know not that far away it's minimized on here, those ranges. And I'd say we're talking about maybe like, you know, 100 meters away or something like that. And then as you get to the edge of the reception, uh, like for instance, if you go out of line of sight around a building, I, was, I, have some, I did some of that. And when at the point where you would really be like out of range with the Furious module where you couldn't see enough at all to do anything and you just have to, you know, uh, punch out and try to gain some altitude to maybe reestablish line of sight to the goggles. There's a little bit of video still that, and it's almost like you get this black and white grainy, like outline fuzz, but you can still make things out. Whereas on the, the, a Fury, the Furious module or a traditional diversity module, you're basically not going to have anything. So it's able to kind of hold on a little bit, I guess, at the end, or at least in my experience. And that's basically a, where I was flying about. Uh, three, two or three hundred meters away, and I would go behind a, a building and completely get out of line of sight with the, the receiver. There was still a little something you could work with, so that was pretty cool. All my testing with the Micro Eagle cameras or the Eagle V2 or any Eagle camera that I've been using has been absolutely perfect. That that works flawlessly. When I do try to use this with the Foxier Arrow Micro Pro. It does still work, the, and I'll show you this in a second, but the only weird thing that happens is like in rapid fire mode one, the video is slightly darker. So I did try it on rapid fire mode two and the image was slightly brighter, more like what I was used to seeing, but uh, we'll take a look here, have a look at this DVR. There's a, this is in mode two now. Even though it's a little bit brighter, there's, the reception's not nearly as good. There's like a the little bit of flashing that goes on. I guess more like a traditional, um, you'd expect in a traditional diversity module. And you know, in these conditions where you've got a lot of concrete and trees around and the ground is wet, there's a lot of radio reflectivity going on because you know, water's covering pretty much everything at this point because it just rained. This is usually very, very tough, you know, conditions to fly in from a from a reception standpoint on the furious you could definitely do it but there was a, a lot of multi-pathing and breaking and, and breakup that would go on even at, at somewhat close ranges this removes a lot of it but in mode two as you can see here uh it's not nearly as good so i've just decided to use mode one and deal with the reduced brightness in the picture by either changing the the brightness on the goggles or you know, better yet, actually adjusting the, the settings and the cameras on those quads. I do have the camera control hooked up, so I can just do that with the, the in the OSD. It's not really a big deal. Maybe brighten up the picture a little bit that way. And it's not a major kind of deal breaker thing. Uh, but when you fly at night, like I do a, a lot, you, you know, you, you know, a little bit of loss of brightness can mean the difference between like, you know, not seeing something and not seeing something altogether. So that was the only weirdness I noticed with that camera. It had a lock 100% of the time. Never lost lock. 
uh, it seemed to work perfectly. So, and supposedly that's like one of the the only. I think there's only a couple of cameras they've listed there. Just like flat out, like this is not compatible. It, it is, and I guess whatever they've been doing in the firmware updates has been fixing that. They've been updating it quite frequently. The firmware updater tool will have. I'll show you a look at it right here. Is extremely easy to use. It's it's not like um, for some other modules where you need to run some weird program and download some hex file and. It's like, it looks like it's not, I mean, this is specifically made by immersion to, you know, facilitate updating and it's, it's, it's great. It's super easy. You even have a little spot here where you can update, um, upload a bitmap image to change the splash screen on your goggles. And that works super easy. I think that's a new feature as well. So when you turn on your goggles, you can have, um, a little bit of a custom image there. That's cool. Uh, I would like if you could show that custom image, uh, you know, when you're idling, because it's only flashes for a second when you boot up the goggle, but well, whatever, it doesn't really matter in the long term. As far as antennas go, I did test this with two Triumphs, um, which is not normally what I would do, but I wanted to see how it worked with two Omnis, and it works pretty good. And I also tested it with my, you know, what I usually use on, on my goggles, which is a Triumph for an Omni, and then a, uh, was it, the 8 dB? Uh, immersion RC spiral net patch and I couldn't really tell a, a big difference between those two setups and I, I just I'm more comfortable using the patch because it's what I'm used to and I feel like you know if I'm pointing the right way it'll get me a little further so I'll probably just run the patch for close to medium range if you even need the patch or not but I couldn't notice a, a really a big big difference between the difference in rapid fire mode one and using two omnis and an omni with a patch so I'm probably just going to use the omni and the patch because uh, I don't know that's what I've always done so the last thing was, you know, the first few days I flew this thing, I hadn't even bothered to look at the DVR footage and looking at what everybody else was saying, you know, I'd see a lot of reviews where it was like, oh, this thing looks great and here's the DVR footage, but it doesn't look like the DVR. The DVR comes out completely different from what they see in the goggles and you'd see things like black and white and all sorts of, you know, messy nonsense all over the image and so I had kind of figured like, oh, my DVR is probably going to look like crap. It looks like crap in the HD3s in general anyway. Like I wasn't really expecting much. And then I started looking at my DVR footage and I realized like this DVR footage is better than any DVR footage I've ever recorded. That was a really pleasant surprise to see that at least on, you know, this version of the firmware and hardware, like the no issues with the DVR. In fact, I have an improved DVR and not that that's super important to me, but I'll take it, right? I mean, I was expecting the DVR to be at best the same or maybe even more likely to, to be worse, but it's actually better. Again, just to kind of recap, if you had asked me about this two weeks ago, I probably would have said, no, no, thank you. Like I'm um, too many issues with it, but I think whatever they've done recently, and I don't know if it happened a month ago or two months ago, but if you, if you look at the negative reviews out there, they typically are about three to four months old. But you know, if you buy one today, the, the hardware and the firmware combination seem to be working well. They've added the features that I think some people were complaining about, like the band scanner. Uh, I couldn't be more pleased with this. So yeah, here's a little more DVR so you can see what it looks like. And this is, I would say it's fair to say that this is, you know, I mean, I'm not going to, you know, obviously other than sticking a GoPro inside my goggles so you can see this is, this is pretty representative of the actual FPV view in my opinion. So thanks for watching guys and I'll see you next time. is a matinee in a galaxy far far away and your debut it's a sold out show yeah it's a blockbuster movie and you play the lead role and right out of the opening scenes the whole crowd's on the edge of their seats your worst critics are sitting up front and they're giving you two thumbs way way up you'll be in league of your own You'll be stealing their hearts, taking Oscars home. So go get them and give it to passion. Quiet on the set, lights, camera.